Christmas Eve, which is this Friday, we will have our Christmas Eve candlelight service start at 5 p.m. On December 26th, the day after Christmas, we are going to have a service full of Christmas carols. So, the day after Christmas, it will be Christmas carols. This week's schedule is in the bulletin. We will have a Wednesday night uh, Bible study this week. Next week, we won't, well, obviously between Christmas and New Year's, but we will have our regular Wednesday night and the reason for that is we're in the last chapter of the book of John, and we will finish that book this year. And we'll think about what we'll do next year. Please stand. Grant to us the precious gift of faith, 
that we may know that the Son of God has come and may have power to overcome the world and gain a blessed immortality through Jesus Christ, O Lord, who lives and reigns forever. Amen. <laughs>
gospel reading this morning is taken from Luke chapter 1, verse 39 through 45. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea. When she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the song of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is he who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promise to her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we read four different passages. The first one reminded us where Jesus would be born. In the gospel message, before he was born, we see that Mary hurried to a city in the hill country of Judea to visit her cousin Elizabeth. And we all know the story, but we need to be reminded each and every year. Last week, if you remember, Zachariah could not speak because he was struck dumb. He was too old to have a kid. Not necessarily Zachariah, but Elizabeth was too old. And yet we see that Elizabeth is pregnant. And the scripture said that Mary, who is also pregnant, and you have to remember back then they did not have the conveniences that we have. For example, today, if you have good news, you can pick up the phone and in a few seconds you can do what? Tell people. Or, as some people do, they get on that multimedia thing and Facebook and WhatsApp chaps and whatever else they, there is. I, I don't even know all of it. But in, in an instant, people can know what? The news. Back then, they did not have that convenience. As a matter of fact, you could live five miles away from a person and don't even know anything about them or their life. And we see that Mary was living in Nazareth and Elizabeth in Judea. And that's like living from here to Texas, and you don't see each other, you don't know much about each other. So the news about Elizabeth being pregnant, or even better, the news of Mary being pregnant, was not known. And so once the news reached Mary, said, at that time, once Mary found out that Elizabeth was pregnant, she did what? She hurried. She got ready and hurried to a town and went to see her cousin because it's, this is great news. A woman in old age having a baby who had not had a baby. And so Mary was going there for Elizabeth. And the scripture said that when she entered Zechariah home and greeted Elizabeth, when Elizabeth heard Mary's voice, just the opposite happened. Here Mary was going to visit Elizabeth to share in her joy. And when Elizabeth heard, Scripture said, The baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Spirit. And in a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you amongst women. The very thing I am sure that Mary wanted to say to Elizabeth, Blessed are you amongst women, because in your old age, God has what? Blessed you. But instead, the baby in Elizabeth left and said, Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the child you bear. At this point, the only persons or people that knew that Mary was pregnant was Mary and Joseph. Nobody else. And yet, we see God working through the Holy Spirit said, Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the child you are. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to see? We see from the very beginning, God's plan at work. 
at this point, during this part of the scripture that we're reading, Mary is living in Nazareth. She goes to visit Elizabeth, and then she returns to Nazareth after this visit. But the baby had to be born where? In Bethlehem. In Bethlehem. And so, Michael reminds us that Bethlehem, a small, at this point, a small little village, if you could call it that. Insignificant in when you can compare it. It's like comparing Otter Tail to the Twin Cities. We are small compared to them. And, and it says, it reminds them, but you, Bethlehem, Epaphra, though you are small, among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel. God reminds us that it doesn't matter who you are or how insignificant you may think you are, that God can do what? That he can use you. And even though Bethlehem is a small village, unimportant in the grand scheme of world affairs, out of that location will come this ruler. Pick up up in Hebrews. We see the key reason for God using Elizabeth and Mary. And the key reason he is willing to use you and I just as he was willing to use Christ. Is because of this response. Picking up in Hebrews first, we see that when Christ came into the world, God said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body prepared for me. With burnt offering and sin offering you were not pleased. As a matter of fact, we see this same idea repeated not once, but twice in this scripture. Picking up again in verse 8, it said, First he said, sacrifice and burnt offering. Burnt offering and sin offering you did not desire, nor were you pleased with them, though they were offered in accordance with the law. Many times we miss what that means. And you see, the people who can afford to give the sacrifice, the burnt offering, the sin offering, and stuff were usually what? Rich people. People of importance, people who had means. But over and over again, we see that God does not choose people based on what they have, but on their willingness to what? To serve. The reality is whatever we have in comparison to who God is, is what? Insignificant. Nothing. After all, all things belong to Him. I'm reminded over and over again, whatever we have in this world, as far as material things, and some people work real hard for those things, and they accumulate things, but we're reminded that at, the, at death, it's the great equalizer. How much of it will you take? None. As a matter of fact, the richest person in the world at death is equal to the poorest person in the world. They own what? Nothing. None of us can take. And, and so what we see is God does not look at what we have, but who we are. Continuing, it reads, Though they were done according to the Lord, then he said, Here I am. I have come to do your will. And that is what we, we are here to say today, is, God, here I am, do, as Mary said, do unto me as you what? Will. That's the whole point of Mary and Elizabeth, is that they were willing to allow God to what? Use them. Here I am, I have come to do your will. The author of Hebrews make it quite clear that God set aside the first to establish the second. 
And many times we miss that point. What does that mean that God, in other words, God set aside all the laws, the rules, the regulations, the sacrifice, all those things to make and to establish the second, which is that he loves us, he cares for us. And during Advent, as we light these candles, we are reminded that God is a God of love. He does not demand from us sacrifice and birth offering and sin offering. What we give to him, we should give out of love and generosity. As a matter of fact, what we give is just a small portion of what he has what? Given to us. Christmas is a time where during Advent we remember the first coming. That Jesus came and was born in Bethlehem and the angels and all those things are great. Christmas is also a time that we remember Mary and Elizabeth. People who, especially women at that time, who were considered what? Not even a full person, a half person, if that. And yet they were willing to be used by God. They answered the question, here I am. I have come to do your will. And as we think about Christmas and being a Christian, we should always be ready to say to God, what? Here I am. I have come to do your will. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. We'll have a hymn of reflection, hymn number 217.
in reality, uh, Hong Kong is now a piece of China, and McCoy is really a part of China. And many people would say, why would we pray for China? The reality is, as Christians, we pray for who? For everyone. The Lord exhorts us to love our enemies, to pray for them. And so, we do pray even for enemies. Are there any other prayer requests or joy? We just pray for all the people that are traveling long distances to make sure that they can go to the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. Prayers for healing for my grandson's back when he's having surgery again on Wednesday. The leg shifted or the bone shifted on the plate. Pray for those who will be traveling, 
Lord, the list goes on and on. We pray for Travis and his healing. We, we're thankful for all these many blessings. And Father, you know the unspoken requests that were not voiced today. And so we pause now for personal prayer and personal confession. Lord, before we say the Lord's Prayer, we remember those who are suffering from the tornadoes, the tsunamis, and other natural disasters. And now, Father, we pray as you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare for the morning offering, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God, the morning offering will now be Prayer. Glorious God, source of every 
your good gift. Bless our lives and offerings this day. May they lift up the lowly, fill the hungry with everything things, and bring strength and mercy to the world in need. In your holy name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Hear these words from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 through 7. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and his name, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Or closing carol in number 240. <laughs> Go forth and bless the world. 